Making excuses is just another reason why you're not going to succeed. Don't allow their doubt to be contagious. Reframe that. I think I'm going to prove you wrong. Easy path, hard path, hard path every time, every time. The hard path is the only path. You know, at the end of the day, you have to push through that short-term discomfort for any long-term gain. Nothing comes easy, you know. A lot of people say that there were so many obstacles in the path, the obstacles are the path. It's a case of just pushing through that short-term discomfort. Embrace the discomfort, that's where you grow. Believe your mind's your strongest weapon and yeah, your mind will give up before your body long ever does. You just need to tell yourself it won't. Like David Goggins and people like, look what they do with their, their body and it's their mind that's making them do it. Probably 80% mindset, maybe even more, maybe 90%. And you can achieve anything you want to in your life if you have that, the right mind. For me, uh, by having the mindset that I could achieve this, what seemed like an unreachable goal probably for your mind at the time, how do you know you're going to get up to this level? And your mind has to tell you or, or has to risk the fact that, yeah, I can do this. And, and what is the worst thing that can happen? Oh, I give something a really good go, but I just don't make it. Is that, is that really that terrible? Or do we use excuses and just don't even go for it? You can achieve anything if you've got the right mind. And I also believe your body responds if your mind's in the right place. After I did all these seven swims, I did ice swimming. Hadn't had much experience of ice swimming, swimming in two, three degrees water temperature. They used to say you would die three minutes, you know, three or four minutes to survive. The reason that I managed to do that isn't because physiology, I'm made up of different blood. My mind believes and my body follows. For most people, it's not a problem of skill set. It's a problem of character. And empty the bucket is having the right character to be consistent and empty out everything you got in every aspect of your life. It's not a valid reason unless you can't physically enable yourself to train. If I give it everything and, and I just do not stop and, and, and make it life or death, because I remember thinking in the English Channel, if, the, if I, there was no boat here and I had to swim to France to save my life, or save my family's life, there'd be no debate that I was a bit tired. I would just do it. So I had to get into that frame of mind. A strong mindset is, like I've said it before, everything comes down to that. A strong mindset will take you as far as you want to go in life. I had to step into the short-term discomfort for any long-term gain. That's how people live their lives. They're not prepared to step into that discomfort, knowing that on the other side of that is the long-term gain. Everyone's taking short-term comfort whether that's drugs, drink, relationships, job choices, all the choices they make, they make knowing that there's a level of comfort there. And if you want to achieve anything in life, if you want to achieve success at work, success in any aspect of your life, you need to take short-term discomfort for long-term gain. You can make up as many excuses in, in your mind as you want with things. And, and as a kid, you know, I don't think I ever wanted to face failure. So, you know, I never really took on, I never wanted to take on too many big things. I think when I was younger, it probably been too much for me because I, I didn't want to fail. It's that word failure. So it's easy to use an excuse for not doing something um, because you might just end up sad or feel bad about yourself. But I think we all know you can make all the excuses in the world, but in the heart for hearts, why not just, just go through it, step over that line, see how capable you are, forget excuses. We have one life. I'd rather go for something and, and not achieve it and try really hard than just come up with excuses. Is it worth it? In, is the end goal worth all the hard work that you're putting through? Is it worth dragging yourself out of bed when your body's in pain? Is it worth getting in there and sparring with some guy who's probably a lot better than you, but you're trying to better yourself? Is it worth round five when you're exhausted and there's 30 seconds left and the fight's even? Is it worth pushing yourself that little bit extra? Is it worth doing running an extra mile? Is it worth getting up at six in the morning and doing hill sprints? Is it worth it? And the answer will always be for me, yes. In mean, life, we can't escape anything that goes on with life. You know, we all 
are not immune to problems, uh, drama, uh, trauma, a tragedy. So, you know, when you're going through some sort of difficulties, you know, first find out whatever that difficulty may be. You know, you do all within your power and, uh, and you believe, you be optimistic about it. You know, being negative about a situation, staying in that place, it never helps. You know, it's nothing wrong with understanding that place, feeling bad about it, looking at it for what it is, but don't stay there. You gotta get back on that other side and start looking at the resolve, the resolution of it, or how can I get back to feeling good and feeling prosperous again to where I'm not dealing with this obstacle. Don't quit, don't ever quit. You know, persistence beats resistance. You know, that for me, quitters is failure. You know, but also understand that failure is, um, you know, success is, 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 is a series of failures. So people that quit, the, the only people that fail are people that quit. You know, if that stops you, you from achieving your goals, then, you know, you have failed. You're embracing failure. This too shall pass. Right? And the reason I would say that is, um, like I said, I champion adversity, right? We know what to do when things go right. But the next time it gets tough, uh, the next time you question your purpose, the next time you question your existence, uh, your mission, if you're supposed to be doing what you're doing, and it gets tough and challenging, just whisper to yourself, this too shall pass, this too shall pass. The thing is, when you are broken, it doesn't necessarily last forever, does it? So you can be a bit broke, you stick it back together, and let's go again. I just don't think about it, just do it. You know, it's if you find your passion in anything, you know, it could be baking, it could be drawing, writing, whatever. It's find that passion and just don't let it go. Um, don't have that plan B. Your life is just so fragile. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, so treat each day like it's your last day. You enjoy life a lot more doing it that way, I think. Temporarily broken, not permanently. Um, that's part of life. That makes you stronger as well. It doesn't need to be about the big stuff. You know, it doesn't need to be about these life-threatening situations. We're faced with this day in, day out. You know, everything we do in life is about taking the short-term discomfort you need to take short-term discomfort for long-term gain. People can take doubt one or two ways. You know, some people get delivered doubt from someone else and that absolutely makes them crumble, cripples them. They stop chasing their dreams. They start believing the doubt expressed from someone else. For me, it works differently. And as soon as I hear that, it gives me more energy to prove them wrong. I can sit around and wait for stuff to happen. I can get out there and make things happen. And that is massively important in any walk of life. It don't matter who you are or what you do, you've got to get after it, you've got to chase it, you've got to make it happen yourself because no one's going to get gifted to you. You're going to have to work for it and those people who are working and those people who are just grinding and they are going the extra hour, doing the extra mile, they're the ones that are going to be at the top. Don't make yourself fall short. You know, it's, it's so easy to, to accept that nothing is going to happen for you. You know, that you're just going to be another number. That's the easiest way. You know, get a job nine till five and that's easy. You know, it's, it's accept that something can happen, but you have to put the work in. It's just, don't be scared of hard work. Let that fire that you've got in your belly, you know, translate into something good. You know, if you've got that passion and that drive, don't ever stop, you know, if you stop 
I guarantee you, like, if you stop when you're 20, by the time you're 40, you're going to resent whatever that reason was you stop. Nobody knows how capable they are. A lot of people go, oh, Adam, I couldn't do what you do. Yes, you can, if you want it enough. And I say, how much you want it? Are you willing to go through the discomfort of it? You know, are you willing to, to face your fears and potentially failure? It all comes back to failure, everything. So what's the true fear? Failure. And once you can face failure in the eye, then, then you're indestructible. I think having a purpose is that thing that, that makes us tick, that gets us up every day and gets us over the hump of opposition and adversity. And the reason that I champion adversity and opposition is because I think for the most part in life, people pretty much know what to do when things go right, right? Like when things go right, they know how to feel, they know how to act, how to react. But it's when that opposition and that adversity comes and it creates a level of misunderstanding, right? Now the vision is blurred. Now you don't have clarity about what you're supposed to do. Now you question if your existence matters. And I think when you have a purpose, it's powerful because in the midst of the opposition, it makes you realize that you've been put here for a certain reason. And so me, once I tapped into my purpose of once I thought it was football, right? But when I started speaking, I'll never forget the day I got the exact same feeling backstage that I used to get before I ran out on the field to play football. And that's when I knew like, this is my purpose. This is what I've been put here to do. And so the opposition, adversity, the challenges, it's just a part of the process. It's gonna make me a better person. But my purpose, I can't let anything stop or detour me. If you want an easy life, then fine, man. It's, it's, it's not gonna be rewarding. You know, doing something easy, you get little reward from it. Doing something hard and succeeding it, doing a marathon, climbing Mount Everest, lifting 500 kilos, putting 230 kilos above your head. Those are extremely hard things to do, but the reward is never ending. You know, making that historic lift, the historic whatever it is, is never ending. You know, so for Tom and I, strongest brothers in history, first brothers in history to ever make the world's strongest man final, that's never ending. Everything we do in life is about taking the short-term discomfort, you know, and that whether that's sending an extra email, staying a bit longer at work, whatever it is. If you want to achieve a goal, let's say you want to run the London Marathon, you know that every week you're going to have to do some training to achieve that. And that is about, yeah, you're not going to want to, but by the time it comes to putting your training on going out the door, your mind's going to tell you and enforce every reason why you shouldn't do it. And it's devious, it'll tell you to go and check your computer, do this, do that. And that's when we have to switch this off. You have to switch the mind off and follow the process. And that's something that I learned from an early age, but something that was further enforced in the military. You have to follow process, follow your heart, switch off this, which is the program. And, that, and through that, you will achieve your aim. If you can take care of the small stuff, you know, about doing everything, whether that's washing the dishes before you go to bed at night so you don't come down to a whole mess in the kitchen, whatever it is, making your bed in the morning, simple things. If you can do the simple things, the big stuff, takes care of itself. That I felt as if, if I do this well, I can get my family in a better situation. If I do this well, I can get my mother off the double shift at Wendy's. If I do this well, I can get my own bed. If I do this well, I can get my grandmother a better living condition. If I do this well, maybe I can stop my uncles from selling drugs. You know what, you've got like a devil and an angel on your shoulder all the time and that devil just needs to be, knock it off because you're always going to have these doubts. You know what, I come in here some days, I'll be training for a fight and I'll train three days in a row and I'll be on fire and I'll have one bad day 
which is expected when you're doing like an eight week camp or anything like that. And you have one bad day and that bad day outweighs the good three days by a mile. And I'll go on thinking, oh, what am I doing here? I'm going to get battered in this fight. But then you come back in the next morning, you have one good session again and that doubt's gone again. So you just, it, it's hard to, to get rid of them demons. And um, I think any athlete who says that they never have any sort of doubts is, is lying. I think everyone's got one that creeps in somewhere, but it's the ones who just manage to just push them on one side and keep the tunnel vision and keep the, what I do is I visualize after the fight, I don't visualise what's going to happen in the fight because I never know. I just always visualise what it's like to win after the fight, what I'll be doing after the fight, how I'll feel after the fight. And I think doing that, that always helps you stay mentally strong. Oh, adversity always prepare you. You know, you have to go through those things in order to see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I don't think anything is going to just be like this throughout your life. You know, you have to go through that difficult overcome obstacle. You know, because it's, it's a testament of your character or who you are and how you're able to deal with certain things in order to get yourself back on that playing field. It was that mission, that goal that I would always focus on. Because if you don't have a focus on a goal or a mission, and this is generally in life, you will find that you end up becoming a victim of your circumstances. You get lost in the journey. Something happens, something major happens, and you become a victim of your circumstances because you've got nothing bigger pulling you through. So really, for me, it's all always been about the fact that I visualise where I want to be when times are tough, when times are hard, when things are going really wrong. I visualise, I've got a vision of where I want to be, and it's that one thing that pulls me through. And I don't get bogged down in the situation. Pain's got to go away at some point, so what it means to me is it's a process you have to go through to make you stronger. Everybody goes through it, it's going to come into your life. As long as you're ready for it, as long as you're prepared to go through it, then it'll change and it'll give you success. When you have to rise above the pain, everyone feels pain. There's no like person out there who's a Terminator, everyone does, it's just how you deal with the pain, that's what the, makes the difference. Either somebody is in the midst of adversity, or just came out of adversity, or it won't be long before they head into adversity. So you need to be prepared either way. And so we all go through adversity opposition. I think that's the thing that, that makes us all in common as people, right? No matter if you're from London, Atlanta, Florida, California, New York, like we're all going to go through something at some point or phase in our life, right? And as cliche as it sounds, when the quote says, it's never about what happens to you, it's about how you respond to it. That's very true. Right? But in the same sense, I think what's most important is when we go through something, what's the perspective that we have of it? Right? Because for most people, when you go through something, the person's natural perspective is, okay, what did I lose? Right? What happened to me? Like I took a loss, right? People never look at it and say, okay, man, tell me what did you gain? Right? Even though I know it hurt, you didn't want to go through it, but look at it in a way to where you can say, what's the lesson in this? Right? What would you say life is trying to teach you from dealing with this? And so when I went through it, my perspective was, okay, what can I extract from it to apply to other areas and aspects of my life that I feel can help other people? And I firmly believe the quicker you can shift your perspective from yourself to others when you're in the midst of adversity, the quicker you'll get through it. Right? Martin Luther King has a quote that says, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing to help other people? Now, I'm not telling you to not acknowledge your pain. I'm not saying that. I'm not telling you not to say, man, I'm going through this and it's hard. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when you go through it, look at it, step back from the picture and say, okay, I'm dealing with this. Nine out of 10 times, there's somebody else that's either dealt with it or they're gonna deal with something similar to this. And if I deal with it in the right way, I can use it to add value to lives of other people. Hold yourself accountable. You know, don't make these excuses. That's it. Hold yourself accountable. Don't make excuses and just have some pride in what you do. Know that it's possible. Just believe in yourself. That's it, it's simple. Believe in yourself and take pride in what you do. Don't ever let anyone say that you can't do it.
do not listen to people that come and tell you that you can't do something. If you want to be that one in eight billion, you've got to work for it. You have already come this far. Why give in when it gets hard? Why? You're not a failure. It's all in the mind, I guess. And it's, all, it's all about how you take it. If you feel that you can do something, don't think about how. Don't think about what you're doing currently and how you're going to stop. Just decide what you're going to do. It's not easy, you know, and I think if it was easy, everybody would be, would be successful. So if you want to be that, you know, person, whatever your aim is, whatever your like, goal is, you need to bring that, you know, and, 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 and I keep saying as well, and against anything, motivation isn't good enough. You need to be self-motivated. If there is somebody else motivating you and you try to achieve that, that's fake. It's, it's, it's not true. You need to bring that energy from your chest by yourself. And then only you become the, you know, then you become not everybody. You'll be somebody. And if you want to, and that's the difference. Because the population of the earth is 8 billion. And if you want to be that one in 8 billion, you've got to work for it. Stop waiting for the right time. The right time is now. Take it now. Work now. Be creative. Be strong. Be successful. We can achieve stuff way beyond what we imagine. We've been conditioned on this with this system to believe that we're just here to get up, we grow up, we get a job, we die, we, you know, we, we're in the great, it's over. We, we, we retire, we do all this rubbish, and that's it. We're not taught that we're amazing, we're powerful, we're intelligent, way beyond our belief. There's always someone who don't believe in your vision. They don't matter. You know, it could be parents, it could be your closest friends. They don't matter. All that matters is what you believe, what you think of yourself. So you've got to create your own story. You've got to create your own vision. You've got to create your own plan and then you've got to be the boss. We are the boss of our own lives, our own destiny, everything. Do not listen to people that come and tell you that you can't do something. Falling down is an accident, but staying down is a choice. It's okay to fail. It's okay to fall. It's okay to lose, but it is not okay to quit. It is not okay to give up. It is not okay. You are better than that. You are not a quitter. You have more within you to give. This can't be it. It's okay. It's okay to fail. It's okay, because failure ain't that until you give up. Failure is a learning lesson. We need to reframe our belief about failure. Reframe it and put a different story behind it and watch it empower you and to, and, and to, stop, and to stop freezing you up because that's what failure does. When you look at yourself as a failure, you're frozen. You're not a failure. We're human, we make mistakes. But as long as you don't repeat that mistake again, you're done. And if you repeat that mistake again and again, then you're stupid. In life, we can't escape anything that goes on with life. You know, we are not immune to problems, or drama, or trauma, or tragedy. You know, we all are here as human beings. I tell you, sometimes we go through things, yeah? And people are going to be listening to this and they, they know they're going to go through stuff and they're going to think, why? But you don't know the future. And the bad stuff we think have come to break us and kill us and stop us. And people mess up and want to commit suicide and end their life and they don't know the great future that they had if they could only get through the shit that they're going through. I would never say like today I'm tired, you know, today it's raining and I, you know how cold it is in winter and all that, you know, it's, it's frosty, there's it's snow, there's all that, but I never kind of you know, had an excuse saying that, oh, I'm, I'm too tired today or I'm like, you know, it's snowing or it's raining because if I say I'll do it, I'll do it and it's also about being disciplined. 
and people say yeah, you require a discipline but then just being disciplined is not good enough you need to be self-disciplined and that's only when you achieve you know, the bigger stuff I guess don't give up on your pursuit because of setbacks don't stop because of failures don't quit because it is getting hard success comes at a price and you must be willing to pay it this storm will pass, and when it does, if you are still standing, you will be stronger for it. Don't quit. You are already hurting. Why stop now? You have already come this far. Why give in when it gets hard? Why? You know what? Come on then. Bring what you have. That kind of an attitude. You cannot change it, you can, but you just like, you come with a positive energy and say like, okay, show me then, what, what can stop me? It's all in the mind, I guess. It's all, it's all about how you take it. You've got a special place on this planet. What you do, there's loads of people doing it, but not like you. Not like you and not like you. You do it your way. And that's what I want people to understand. There's no one on the planet like you. No one. They, got, they ain't got your DNA. They ain't got your fingerprints. They, can't, they haven't got your tone, the way you do things. They're not like you. So you can't decide to throw in the towel and, and, and get, out, get out the game of life. You can't do that. You're robbing us of what you've been given, what's hidden inside you. There's a hidden leader in all of us. There's gifts in all of us. Why don't we tap into it? Don't say, why me? Say, try me. Stop wishing it was easier. Wish you were better. Hey, I almost wasn't here, you know, so why I have to worry about what someone else said that could hurt me and deteriorate me from becoming who I want to be. The rewards for doing bad things are not wonderful. Count the costs, broken families, broken homes, um, death, uh, pe jail time, um, people just wasted their lives with a messed up mind. The cost of giving up. We run away from it all. So how are we going to share the experience and empower other people if we keep running or we want to take our life and bloody do ourselves in? Bro, you, we've got massive stories to help others. We don't, this is a messed up world with beautiful people. It's in our control to reframe our story. Why do we buy the story that we're given? Why do we give up on this gift called life so easily? and allow the pain to stop us from moving on into our great future, man. We got this, we got control, we're a special creation. And we give up and we throw it away so easy. That's why I can't give up and I can't throw it away because I realize that I'm special, that I'm made by a special power. And we all are, every single one of us. Look at the gift that you lot have got. We all got choice. Imagine if we all made the choice to live for good. If we all decide to live like that, what a planet, bro. It's okay to fail. It's okay, because failure ain't that until you give up. Failure is a learning lesson. We need to reframe our belief about failure and watch it empower you and to, and, and, to stop, and to stop freezing you up because that's what failure does. When you look at yourself as a failure, you're frozen. I will not quit because I am better than that. I will not give in because I am powerful. I will not quit because I can succeed. I will not quit because quitting is not in my nature. I will not quit. I will never quit. I will never surrender. Be brave, because no one remembers a coward. Your want and need and desire to achieve your goal has to be stronger than everything else that comes against you. So what was happening, whatever was going on with me that was horrible, that made me uncomfortable, that I didn't like, everything that made me feel like that, I would envision my end goal. And I would realize that are you going to allow this 
to get in the way of the pleasure of reaching this goal. And every time I had that thought, I would keep going. I knew that if I reached that target, the feeling I was gonna get to reach the goal that I'd set was gonna develop me and build me up. So I just kept going and I knew that I was building something in me that was becoming strong and mighty. You just need to decide. Decide to step up to the plate. Decide to step out of the shadow. Decide to let go of the fear you have. Decide to be great because you are capable. Dedication doesn't have an off season. Are you willing to fight? Are you willing to grab? Are you willing to be the warrior? Bring your shield, bring your sword. Stand up and fight. This will be your power. Today will be the day where you can take control. Take control of your power. Become this power because now is the time to fight. So fight, fight for your progress. Your progress is the potential to take your life towards the life you deserve. There's always somebody who don't believe in your vision. They don't matter. It could be parents. It could be your closest friends. They don't matter. All that matters is what you believe, what you think of yourself. So you've got to create your own story. You've got to create your own vision. You've got to create your own plan. And then you've got to be the boss. We are the boss of our own lives, our own destiny. I will not quit because I am better than that. I will not give in because I am powerful. I will not quit because I can succeed. I will not quit because quitting is not in my nature. I will not quit. I will never quit. I will never surrender. Be brave because no one remembers a coward. Don't, don't make yourself fall short. Just accept that something can happen but you have to put the work in. It's just, don't be scared of hard work. Let that fire that you've got in your belly, you know, translate into something good. You know, if you've got that passion and that drive, don't, don't ever stop. Your life isn't over, <laughs> oh no, so fight for it. Fight for something better, better than the power you have now, because your power is worth something more. Discipline will take you towards something with purpose. You need to make it past your limits. Graft until it hurts, until you feel the pain, the pain that feels like you're making progress, the progress that fills you with pride. You gotta be proud of yourself every step of the way. Find that pride that gives you purpose in life. And that purpose should give you the motivation to be who you always knew you could be and not someone better than who you are now. You want the hard times. You want the pain. You want resistance. Because if there is resistance, you are growing, you are developing. Stop wishing it was easier. Wish you were better. If you think you are the only guy doing an extra hour after practice, you are wrong. When you are doing an extra hour, there is a guy doing an extra two hours on the other side of the world. Think beyond your team. Your competition isn't the guy in the gym. Your competition is in Japan, Spain, Russia. Your competition isn't always in front of you. It is easy to be a big fish in a small pond. It is time to think outside of your circle and compete with the best of the best. Compete with the guys who are getting more work than you. You can convince yourself you work hard when you compare yourself to someone in class or someone on the team or your brother or your sister. But how does your work ethic look when you compare yourself to a Kobe Bryant or a Michael Jordan? So I went for it, and I went for it every time I fought. I went for it every time I went running. I went for it every time I went in the gym. I went for it, I gave 100%. Because I knew if I'd done it then, you put me in the spotlight, I'm gonna do it there. Because I'm doing it behind the scenes where no one's watching me. I'm giving 100% when no eyes are on me. 
I could get away with giving up when I'm tired. I've done my groundwork. I've done my sit-ups. I've done my press-ups. I went running, but no one knows I didn't give 100% when I went running. They just know I went running. My trainer could ask me, did you go run this morning? Yeah, but I know I gave 100% when I went running and I left nothing out there. So when I go into fights, bro, you got to finish me off. you got to put me to sleep to beat me. That's the only way. I'll accept it. I'll accept the loss, but I know I'm sleeping. Because as long as I can breathe and as long as I, my eyes can open, I'm getting up. I'm absolutely obsessed. I'm the one that has to do the work. I'm the one that has to eat the food. I'm the one that has to do all these things. Like, yeah, you can have the best cuts in the world, but that doesn't make you a champion. You have to work for yourself. I will not quit because I am better than that. I will not give in because I am powerful. I will not quit because I can succeed. I will not quit because quitting is not in my nature. I will not quit. I will never quit. I will never surrender. Be brave because no one remembers a coward. This is the time for you to step up for yourself because this is an opportunity where you can better yourself into the direction that you've been deserving this whole time, the one you've been dreaming of all your life. The direction where you progress into a world where you can really see the change you've been craving. You'll find out when you push yourself more. That's the only time you find out. Because I listen to other guys who have achieved and done great things, whether they've been runners, athletes, businessmen, and they believe that their, their bodies and minds or other people set a standard and a limit for them. But I think we don't realize as human beings that we're limitless in terms of mentally, spiritually, we can achieve stuff way beyond what we imagine. We've been conditioned to believe that we're just here to get up, we grow up, we get a job, we die. We are not taught that we're amazing, we are powerful, we are intelligent, way beyond our belief. You know, it's your mind, the power of your mind and your belief that allows you to set the standards for yourself. You just need to decide. Decide to step up to the plate. Decide to step out of the shadow. Decide to let go of the fear you have. Decide to be great because you are capable. Mindset is everything. You know, it's mindfulness. You know, until you're mentally prepared, you're never physically ready. So whatever it is you're doing, I mean, and if you want to know what you think about, look at your life, that's what you think about. And if you want to improve that, you need to improve your thinking. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. Do you want to cross the bridge between continuity other to change and success? Discipline. The time is now to face the discipline, fight through the pain to reach power within, and to ultimately become an improved person. Cross the bridge. Fight each day for the success you've been waiting for. Fight for the opportunity to thrive outside your comfort zone. These choices don't come easily and definitely don't come twice. Hard work pays off, but in order for that to happen, you have to fight through the pain, the rejection, and the heartbreak. Wake up each day with attitude to change. Today you will walk with confidence, knowing that today will be the day you face your fears of failure. It's okay to fail. It's okay, because failure ain't that until you give up. Failure is a learning lesson. We need to reframe our belief about failure and watch it empower you and to, and, and, to stop, and to stop freezing you up because that's what failure does. When you look at yourself as a failure, you're frozen. The, the only people that fail are people that quit. You know, if that stops you from achieving your goals, then you know you have failed. 
you're embracing failure. The moment you tell yourself that you can't do something, that's the moment when you won't do it. I'm a huge believer in accepting the pain. I believe that it's gonna strengthen my, my, my mind. With that attitude, tomorrow or the next day, progress will be accomplished. You will know you faced the discipline and fought your way out of your comfort zone. We need to feel pain to feel happiness. The pain drives us to strive for change. Just know that when life becomes hard someday, it's guaranteed that it will get better. Maybe not right now, but as long as you try, the chance of change and success increases. You're not done, bro. It's the start. Reframe the story, bro. It's in our control to reframe our story. Why do we buy the story that we're given? Why do we give up on this gift called life so easily and allow the pain to stop us from moving on? into our great future, man. We got this, we got control, we're a special creation. And we give up and we throw it away so easy. That's why I can't give up and I can't throw it away because I realize that I'm special, that I'm made by a special power. And we all are, every single one of us. Look at the gift that you have got. Don't make yourself fall short, you know, it's, it's so easy to, to accept that nothing is going to happen for you. You know, that you're just going to be another number. That's the easiest way. You know, get a job nine till five and that's easy. You know, it's, it's accept that something can happen, but you have to put the work in. It's just, don't be scared of hard work. What you do, there's loads of people doing it, but not like you, not like you and not like you. You do it your way. There's no one on the planet like you. No one. They, got, they ain't got your DNA. They ain't got your fingerprints. They can't. They haven't got your tone, the way you do things. They're not like you. So you can't decide to throw in the towel and, and, and get, out, get out the game of life. You can't do that. You're robbing us of what you've been given, what's hidden inside you. There's a hidden leader in all of us. There's gifts in all of us. Why don't we tap into it? Forget what this world has taught us to fall in line, do as you're told, no. Think for yourself, step out of line, feel that freedom and power of stepping out of line and saying, wait a minute, hold on, what you're saying doesn't make sense. What you're saying is not right. You're taking away my constitutional right to live life on my terms. And that's what benefits everybody else. We impact on everybody else's life by taking ownership of ours, by using our gifts and our talents, by treating everybody the way we like them to treat us. The problem is, bro, we're not loving ourselves. Well, hard work is required. You know, everything in life doesn't just happen. Success doesn't just come, you know. You got to put, you know, your, your time, effort, hard work, dedications, and, and you need all those components to, to, to lead, you know, towards your end goal. Success is a series of failures. You've got to keep on to, to, to achieve anything in life, to achieve, to, to achieve success in life, you must fail and keep on failing. And always when you start, always know that if you're failing throughout your life, as long as you're not repeating the same failures, that you're growing at the same time. Don't wait for the opportunity to be handed to you on a plate. Only you and just you can make that happen. The sun still shines. The world still spins. Life continues. You're here for one reason, yourself. Cherish your time and don't waste it thinking about what you want to achieve. Spend time willing and completing your goals because nothing is impossible.
Progress can finally be made. The barrier can finally be broken. Happiness can finally be seen in the horizon. And your mindset can finally be changed. You know, if, if you tell yourself that you never can become a great chef, then you won't become a good chef. If you tell yourself that you never can become a good athlete, then you probably won't, won't become a great athlete one day, you know. It, it starts, to, starts with a belief. The more you believe and, and tell yourself and set yourself goals and, and, and visualize, you visualize yourself, you know, holding that trophy or even lifting that big lift, you know. Everything happened for a reason. No regrets. All the negative things that happened, I'm thankful for it because I learned, hopefully I learned from those situations. That's what I had to go through. You know, that's what I did. But keeping that positive message in my head, knowing that I, I can, and knowing that, you know, no matter who, what anybody else thought, I believe. And that's what I want every kid to understand. Falling down is an accident. Staying down is a choice. The rise is so much more important than the mistake at heart. The mistakes you make are more significant than you think they are. They define you. You change you. They transform you into the person you are today and change you into the person you can become tomorrow. Stop making the mistakes you make today define the person you can be. The way you rise, the way you push past what's holding you back is how you grow, how you grow into the person you can and will become. So smile today, sweat today, feel the pain today, because nothing but time is wasted. This time is powerful, precious. What else are you going to do? How much more are you willing to work? How many more steps can you take? Start pushing yourself until you feel the pain. This pain is your sign, the sign that you've made it. Your past has gone. The present is now, and so is the future. It's bright. With this attitude, it can be bright brighter than you can ever imagine. This is your time to prove yourself that life can be so much more, that it's sacred, and something so sacred sometimes takes sacrifices, sacrifices you will not regret this time next year. We're all worth far more than anyone can imagine. Our power honestly is endless, and our potential has the power to make something real out of the life you live. Take control of your life. Control your actions because your actions that you make right now define your future. And how do you see your future? You see it successful, full of life, fueled with potential. And if that's what you want, then you're going to need to take action right now because otherwise you're going to get to a point where you realize you don't have the time left to make the progress that you need to make. You're going to soon realize that you have no time left because your future is now. You might feel tired now, but then it is going to matter and make a world of a difference and you're going to thank yourself right now. Right now is the time to make it in a life where you live in this very moment, right here, right now. Stop thinking of everybody else. Stop seeking everyone else's approval and seek your own approval. Be proud of yourself. Listen to what I just said. Be proud of yourself. You're not done, bro. It's the start. Reframe the story, bro. It's in our control to reframe our story. Why do we buy the story that we're given? Why do we give up on this gift called life so easily and allow the pain to stop us from moving on into our great future, man? We got this. We got control. We're a special creation and we give up and we throw it away so easy that's why i can't give up and i can't throw it away there's no one on the planet like you no one so you can't decide to throw in the towel you can't do that you're robbing us of what you've been given what's hidden inside you there's a hidden leader in all of us i will not quit because i am better than that i will not give in because i am powerful i will not quit because i can succeed I will not quit because quitting is not in my nature. I will not quit. I will never quit. I will never surrender.
My situation was what it was at a very young age. And so my whole life, I wanted different for my family ever since I was a kid, right? And my coach took me across town to play ball. And when we'd be riding home, we'd be riding through these neighborhoods, right? And we would see people in their living condition, right? And he would be pointing out different houses and people just telling me about life. You know, he was teaching me and molding me, right? And he was showing me that, hey man, like you don't have to live like that. And when that would be happening, every time I would go back into my community, I was there in the situation, but I was very much cognizant that it was a better life out there if I made the right decisions and right choices. And so it was almost like you come up in this situation of opposition and adversity that you're in. And then every single day you get to go out and you get to see a different life and you get to be free for a few hours. Then they bring you back into the opposition and adversity. So it's almost like you're taking a test, then they pull you out of the situation, they take you somewhere, they show you the answers to the test, then they put you back in a situation and they make you take the test again. And you know the answers, but the opposition and the adversity and the current of it is so strong that for most people, they forget the answers. And for me, I wanted to be laser focused and keep the answers so I can make the right decisions and choices so I can pass what I felt at the time was the ultimate test. Because I've came from a situation to where I didn't know where my next meal was coming from. I came from a place to where I watched my mother scrape up change. It's a lot of moments and it's a lot of people that change and impact your life, right? Like I don't believe it's just one moment and you say, this one moment just changed my life. Even though that moment may have, but it's going to be another moment that's going to shape and change your life as well. Like my arm changed my life, my teacher changed my life. But I'll never forget, he drove up in my neighborhood and I was on the corner with one of my uncles. And my uncles at the time, they were drug dealers. All right, and I wasn't selling drugs, I was just hanging out. You hung out in the neighborhood on the street. And he pulled up in his truck and he was just like, what are you doing out here? Like, I'm chilling. He's like, no, you didn't hear me. What are you doing out here? I was like, I'm hanging out. He was like, get in the truck. And I got in his truck, he said, point me to your house. I pointed him to my grandmother's house. We pulled up, I get out, and he says to me, Ink, you're better than that. And I was like, I hear you. I was like, but the same corner you just picked me up from, uncle wear a 2X t-shirt. He said, morning when I come to your class, I'm gonna be wearing a 2X t-shirt that he stood on the corner in and probably sold drugs in and did whatever all night. And I'm 135 pounds. So I hear you, right? But to me, those are just words, right? Basically saying to him, I'm coming from a real situation, right? So I hear you talking, but I'm coming from a real situation. And he was like, you think I'm playing? I'll be here in the morning to pick you up. And the next morning he picked me up and he said, here's the deal, man. He said, I'm gonna pick you up. I'm gonna play you in a game of one-on-one -on -one basketball every morning and I'm gonna make you recite a proverb until you graduate high school. And I was like, he's just talking. And every single morning, he did it. He picked me up, take me to school. He would play me in a game of one-on-one -on -one basketball, make me recite a proverb. And this is the moment I knew it was for real. The principal came into the gymnasium. And in Atlanta, and in you know school systems, most of them worldwide, public schools, you got this thing between the church and the state, right? To where they don't want you to bring church religion into the school system, which I get and I understand. And the principal came into the gymnasium and said to him, I heard you've been given inky proverbs, which proverbs out of the Bible. And he said, yes, sir, I have. He said, stop it or I have to fire you. And at the time, my teacher was 23 years old, right? We were his first class of students fresh out of college. And he looked at the principal and he said, well, you're just going to have to fire me because his life is worth it, right? And I'll never forget in that moment saying if he's willing to put the way that he provides for his family on the line for me, I got to give him everything I got, right? And I never wanted to let him down. So I would be in the park late when I was a kid and uh, at the football practice because my mother worked a double shift. And so I would stay there and I loved the game. And when she would pull up in the park, you know, most of the kids would be going home and I would be sitting there on the bench. And she drove at the time, it was an old Buick Regal and hubcaps off the car, you know, seats torn up, cars all beat up, but we loved it. You know, it was my mother's car. And she would pull up and get out and I would hug her. 
kiss her. And I would say, mom, if you don't mind, can you sit in the car and turn on your car lights? I got to do some extra drills. Got to go to the NFL so you'll never have to work another day in your life. And I knew my mother was tired, right? And my mother never said to me, nah, boy, let's go. Get in the car. Let's go home, right? Like, bump that. Not doing that. She would always go sit in that car and she would turn on those car lights and I'll be out on the field. I'll be running laps. I'll be doing agility drills. I'll be running sprints, chasing this dream to go to the NFL. And for me, that level of sacrifice was the thing that drove me and still drives me until this day, right? That's why when I competed, it wasn't just about a sport for me, right? Like I looked at competition I looked at work ethic, I looked at dedication, I looked at commitment, I looked at sacrifice as this is life for me. This isn't about a sport. This is about things that I can extract from this sport and apply it to everyday life to make me somewhat of a decent human being, right? And so when my mother did that for me, that made an impact and an imprint on my soul, right? That I take with me even until this day. And so at the beginning of my junior year, my coach came to me and basically said, hey, Inc., man, you're projected draft pick. Like NFL teams scouting you. They love you. All you got to do is do what you've been doing and you'll get a shot. You'll be an automatic multimillionaire. You could take care of your family. And I was like, awesome, man. And so coming into my junior year, I'm thinking all I have to do is do what I've been doing. I just got to play football. That's easy. Right, and I come out the first game we play against California Bears. I execute, I have a great game, we get the victory, and we're going into the second game against Air Force. Tough group, discipline group. Fourth quarter rolls around, two minutes left. And so, usually in two minutes, the game is basically about to be over. And so, we're thinking, we make a couple of more stops. I'm thinking, if I get the opportunity to hit a guy in the game, make him fumble, get ready for Florida the next week. And so the quarterback drops back, throws it to a guy, he catches it, and I go to make the tackle. That's supposed to end the game. And as soon as I hit him, right, something different happened that never happened to me before in my life. Every breath in my body left, right? My body went completely limp, fell to the ground, blacked out, right? When I came to, my teammates were standing over me like, ink it up, let's rock. I was like, I can't, right? I can't move. There was a shot going through my body. I couldn't feel anything. But me thinking, it's just a stinger, shoulder injury, nothing too serious, right? And when they get me over to the hospital and they run their test and then they bring me back into a room and my mother had just left the room kissing, praying, you know, kiss me on my head, praying and saying, Ink, you'll be fine, right? And when she walks out, the doctor runs in and says, guys, guys, we got to rush this kid back to emergency surgery. He's about to die. I got to rush you back, take the main vein out of your left leg, plug it into your chest in order to save your life. He said, oh, I guarantee you, you won't be here in the morning. He said, you're bleeding internally. And so the next morning I woke up, I was grateful that I was still alive, right? And I think because of the, um, the seriousness of the situation, right? It made me view football in a micro way, in terms of I love the game, right? It hurt that my career ended, right? It hurt it. Right, but I was there. My life was spared. Like if they didn't catch that my artery had busted and I was bleeding internally, I could have went to sleep that night and the next morning, the title on the paper, the newspaper would have been different. It wouldn't have been Inky Johnson suffered possibly career ending injury. It'd have been Inky Johnson lost his life last night from a tackle made in the game. And so it made me view it differently. Even though I had a long road a rehabilitation for my arm ahead of me. Uh, My grandmother used to say something to me all the time, and I think it's so true. And she would say to me, Inky, either somebody is in the midst of adversity or just came out of adversity, or it won't be long before they head into adversity. So you need to be prepared either way. And so we all go through adversity, opposition. I think that's the thing that, that makes us all in common as people. Right. No matter if you're from London, Atlanta, Florida, California, New York, like we're all going to go through something at some point or phase in our life. Right. And as cliche as it sounds, when the quote says it's never about what happens to you, it's about how you respond to it. 
you're not done bro it's the start reframe the story bro it's in our control to reframe our story why do we buy the story that we're given why do we give up on this gift called life so easily and allow the pain to stop us from moving on into our great future man we got this we got control we're a special creation and we give up and we throw it away so easy that's why i can't give up and i can't throw it away because i realize that i'm special that i'm made by a special power and we all are every single one of us look at the gift that you have got what you do there's loads of people doing it but not like you not like you and not like you you do it your way there's no one on the planet like you no one they got they ain't got your dna they ain't got your fingerprints they can't they haven't got your tone the way you do things they're not like you so you can't decide to throw in the towel and and, and get out get out the game of life you can't do that you're robbing us of what you've been given what's hidden inside you there's a hidden leader in all of us there's gifts in all of us why don't we tap into it forget what this world has taught us to fall in line do as you're told no think for yourself step out of line feel that freedom and power of stepping out of line and saying wait a minute hold on what you're saying doesn't make sense what you're saying is not right you're taking away my constitutional right to live life on my terms and that's what benefits everybody else we impact on everybody else's life by taking ownership of ours by using our gifts and our talents by treating everybody the way we like them to treat us the problem is bro we're not loving ourselves we ain't been taught to love ourselves you have to know who you are first you have to recognize who i am and accept that you're loved that means you love you by reframing that story that everything that you've told yourself about life how you got dealt with how growing up was all your relationships all the stories you told yourself that end up being with a negative outcome reframe it and give it a new outcome that benefits you and empowers you i reframe my dad's story and my dad ain't don't love me look at the way he beats me look what he does to me he don't love me he don't care about me i reframed it dad needs help dad's unfortunate because he didn't get to enjoy the blessings of young men that came out of his seed and grew up into grown men my dad had three kings my mum didn't know she had three kings coming out of her womb so unless you do the job right then you're going to find out they done my, my dad got his part wrong but that doesn't mean if i don't walk in the right steps in believing in myself that i can't still bear fruit and find out who i really am daddy didn't show me but i showed me cuz i believed and understood that i'm a special created being that's very important to have great self esteem forget the esteem that others put on you cuz normally they don't we need to put esteem on ourselves what do we do when we hear people talking positively about this stuff oh he's arrogant you know he thinks too much of himself no, he doesn't you know what's wrong with talking about how much you love yourself because you you can only love people at the level that you love yourself bro you can't love me more than you love you you can't so all these people that talk about i love you really do you love yourself the question is isn't do you love me it's do you love you once i know you love you bro i already know that i'm going to receive good love and good treatment from you because i know that you love and respect yourself you're not going to hurt other people like that because you care about yourself you care about your children and your family it's an expression of you so we need to focus on ourselves first i needed to focus on me how i was dealing with me and then i was able to go to the children we all want to do positive things in life we all want to share and help people so now this world's going to be a greater place because of the way we think You want to change the quality of your life? Change the quality of your thinking.